What's up? How's it going? Welcome to my second channel where I post things because I can't help myself. Today I want to talk about uh, riff writing advice from legendary guitarist Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine fame and what I learned from his masterclass. Because when I did my Dead Mouse masterclass video, I was using a friend's account that was about to expire, and so I had a little bit of time to poke around in a couple of other masterclasses. Most of them were not all that interesting. Uh, which is kind of the premise of the Dead Mouse video is that Masterclass is a technically good product, but a total ripoff and often boring or elementary. But one thing I really did enjoy was uh, a segment in Tom Morello's Masterclass talking about how he writes riffs and kind of the approach to writing riffs. That was really interesting. I wrote down a ton of notes and I kind of want to talk about what I learned from that. So I've got a couple slides here just of raw text and I'll just go through this point by point with absolutely no audio examples. You can go listen to Rage Against the Machine songs. I highly recommend it. Um, that stuff really holds up and is a little too topical for comfort. So the first thing that he talked about was his example of Rage Against the Machine practicing on rental gear that wasn't their normal gear because that had already been shipped off to a gig or something like that. And they just weren't feeling it. It sounded bad. Everything wasn't really clicking. And they were at first having a bit of an existential crisis being like, are we so reliant on our specific instruments and amps that we sound bad on anything else, and does that mean we're bad musicians? And then they realized actually the answer is no, because depending on the gear that you start off with, you will write something different. The gear that you write with and the tone of the instrument that you start with will shape the stuff that you write with it. And so if he was saying if they had those rental instruments to begin with, they would have written something that is designed to sound good on those instruments and it would have ended up being very different. And so tone of the instrument shapes the riff and embrace that, don't run away from it. I've definitely experienced this from writing synth lines. Just sometimes flipping through synth presets can be incredibly inspiring because you'll write differently depending on the timbre of the instrument. And that is not something to be dismissed or to be afraid of, it's something to be embraced, especially if you're making rock, metal, or electronic music, which are both very compositional but also very sound-based. So. Embrace it. The second thing is a funny little detail that he mentioned is that F sharp is the most rocking of all keys. Um, and the funny thing about that is in electronic music, there's a bit of a parallel because a lot of like drum and bass and dubstep and other heavy bass music is very intentionally written in F minor because the sub hits in a really nice spot there. And once again, timbre playing a key role in how something sounds. Um, so when he was talking about writing riffs specifically, he mentioned that there are two schools of thought. There's, um, Every instrument serves a rhythmic purpose and everything comes back to the one. So you're kind of root note, every bar or two. So of course the classic example is the uh, killing in the name main riff, the that always comes back to that first note and then kind of builds on that and builds little variations out of that. And that can make something sound incredibly heavy. And it's good for repetitions and he uses this one a lot, and you'll hear this all across Rage Against the Machines music. And I'm a big fan of that style as well. I've tried to adopt that in bass lines to decent effect. And he also mentioned that if you have more movement, so it's built more on chords, um, you have more harmonic inter interplay, but you lose some of that punch, which that's a trade-off that you can definitely make. A good example of that is Mark from Periphery. He writes a lot of stuff that's very based around chords and that really works. It definitely depends on your style, but I appreciated Tom's uh, kind of explaining how to write using that whole root note thing and why that's heavy. And you also don't have to choose. You can do a mixture of both. And also I, I'll jump to this one right here because I appreciated his emphasis on making something funky and groovy and how that actually leads to something being heavy. I think this is extremely underrated and it's easy to try to just write something heavy, but often the way to write something heavy is to write something with a substantial amount of groove to it. That all kind of melds together. He also mentioned that for maximum kind of attitude, an interval that he likes is he likes to start a riff on a flat seventh and then move to the one. Um, he uses the blues scale. And also that uh, experimenting with different tuning styles can often lead to inspiration. And he gave the story of the fact that the main killing in the name riff, he was uh, showing a student of his when he was like teaching guitar to get a bit of side income. He's showing a, a student of his 
um, how to play in drop D and he started riffing and immediately went, hold up, I have to record this and then brought it to the band later on and that became the main riff of that song, which is pretty wild. Um, once again, that relies on a lot of the techniques we already talked about. He also mentioned start on the two or even the and of one to add more syncopation to your riff. Basically, he ran through a bunch of little techniques that you can just immediately incorporate and try to write something from, which I really appreciated. I thought that was super practical and gives you a bit of an insight into his mind and how he thinks when he writes riffs, which is really useful. And finally, he mentioned try inserting obnoxious breaks, like um, just stop playing in random spots or even just after the fact, mute it in random spots and see if that can add some kind of extra syncopation or attitude and maybe see if it can lead to something cool. And then of course he mentioned, and I don't, I didn't write this down, but he loves the chucka chuckas where he mutes the strings and other little sound effects mixed in, uh, harmonic pinches and all that kind of stuff. People often do the Gojira pick slide nowadays, uh, just inserting that kind of stuff to create more interest in your riffs. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you incorporate some of these ideas and found them useful. I probably did not communicate them in as nearly a useful fashion as Tom did, but in my opinion, that was by far the best thing on the entire masterclass site, at least in terms of what I was able to see in my limited time looking at it. So if you'd like more things that I find interesting and hopefully you will too, uh, be sure to subscribe and definitely subscribe to my main channel because there's stuff on there and it's good. So that is all. Peace.